Welcome to the short introduction on using the InnerSafe plugin for Quantum GIS or QGIS. In this um, screencast, I'll be giving you a walkthrough of how you would use the plugin to do a flood analysis in Jakarta, um, and we'll show you how you can achieve this in a few simple steps. The first thing that you need to do um, when you start um, working with InnerSafe is you need to uh, load some data into QGIS. So I'm going to add a couple of um, layers. I've got a project that I've already pre prepared earlier, um, which I'll just be adding in over here. In this project I've got um, a flood data set and I've got um, building data set. The building data set is vector data and the flood data set is a raster data set. Um, in the flood data set each cell in the data set represents um, the inundation levels for that cell. So if I zoom in a bit over here, you'll see that they're color coded um, according to the inundation levels. So if I um, if I use the identifier tool and click on one of these blue cells, the value that you get back here represents the the flood depth. So this would be 0.8 meters. I could click on a dark blue cell. Can see that that's over a meter um, depth. So we'll be using that information to, de to determine whether a building would be affected based on the criteria that um, buildings that are in a flood depth of greater than one meter would be affected, probably closed. Um, then we have a we have a buildings layer here, which you can see in pink, and this data set comes from the OpenStreetMap project, and um, there is uh, some basic information about the building. For example, we can see whether it's a school or a house or a church or what have you. So we'll be combining these two data sets to do our analysis. You'll notice that on the right here, the InnerSafe um, pan panel or doc panel is um, displaying information about the layers that we've loaded. The reason it knows about these layers is because we've um, created keywords for them. The keyword system is InnerSafe's way of describing the metadata for each layer um, that you've loaded. Um, and you can find out um, more about the keywords by going to the InnerSafe um, toolbar. And there's a keyword editor. It's this one with the little pencil on, on the icon. If you click on that, um, while the layer is active, you'll see the keywords for that layer. And the keywords describe um, the, a title for the layer and then the category, where the category could be either hazard. Um, a hazard would be a flood, for example or exposure, which in our case would be um, a building footprint. Um, and then we can also give a, a subcategory for it where we um, describe the um, a little bit more detail. So in this case, we're saying that this is a, a structural element coming from the OpenStreetMap project. OK, so you need to define keywords for each layer that you'll be using in the an analysis. If I look at the flood, um, data set here, you'll see that their keywords have been defined for this one as well. In this case, it's been defined as a hazard, and the subcategory has been set to flood meters. Once that's been done, then InnerSafe will automatically detect those layers and they'll display in the panel here. And then it will, based on the combination of layers that you've got loaded, it will look to see which impact functions could be used with it. In this case, the flood impact function has been um, selected because it knows that you've got buildings and flood and so that the only thing you can really do that do with that data is a flood impact. <clears throat> when you click on a layer you'll notice here in the, in the information area of the doc panel that it also des describes the, um, uh, the keyword metadata to you. The same as what we put in the keyword editor and the way that this um, is being displayed is, is by, the, by the fact that we've edited the keywords for it using this tool over here. Right, so the next thing you would need to do it would be to zoom to an area where you want to do your analysis. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. Maybe to something like, like that. And um, just shift it over a little bit like this. Right, so now you've, uh, you've you've highlighted or you've uh, zoomed to the area that you want to do your analysis in. All you have to do to carry out the analysis is simply to click on the Run button. 
When you click on run, some information will be displayed in this panel over here explaining what's happening. But basically, what's, what InnoSafe does is it clips both data sets to the area of extents that you see in the project. And then it will perform the analysis and lo load the results. So now you can see the res results have been loaded in the display. Um, and it shows us a new layer called Estimated Buildings Affected. You'll also notice that in the panel on the right here, the information panel, it's got a summary now which displays the results of the analysis. And I'll just walk you through the data that's provided. The first thing that it does is it um, describes the analysis in the form of a question. So um, in this case, it uses the, the hazard layer and the um, exposure layer um, combined with the function to build the question. So it says, in the event of a flood in Jakarta, like in 2007, but with structural improvements, how many essential buildings might be flooded? And then it gives us tallies for each of the different building classes. Now, you remember when I clicked on the building, it showed me it was school or um, we could um, have all different categories for buildings. Um, and so it's basically aggregating the data according to those different building classes. And it's showing us here that, for example, there is um, uh, a total of 1,720 buildings in the analysis area, of which 192 are expected to be flooded. And then it gives us the breakdowns of the different building types. So one clinic might be flooded, um, 19 places of worship, and 22 schools. Then InnoSafe also gives you some helpful information underneath if you're a um, disaster manager and planning uh, your contingencies for after the disaster takes place or, um, um, or a flood incident or what have you. Um, then uh, this, this is a checklist to just um, go through and um, prioritize your actions after the event. And then it also displays the bottom, the assumptions that we've made. So I said before I started the analysis that the assumption was that any building that's in greater than one meter depth of water would be f um, f uh, flooded or closed. And so that's just documented here. And then it also shows you um, the information about the data sets that we used, in particular what the data source was for each data set if it's available. And that's just to give a, um, a, a credit, uh, a credits to the, the people that provided the original data. Okay, and if you look on the map itself, you can see that the, the, um, the analysis results produced color-coded buildings layer. So usually the, um, the outputs would be um, a, a replicated form of the original exposure data set. So here you can see each building, but now it's been tagged or color coded according to whether it's flooded or not. In addition to the on screen display, you can also produce um, two reports, and they're produced automatically by pres pressing the print button. So when you press on print, um, what will happen is that um, you'll get prompted where, to, where would you like to save your, um, your report. I'm going to just save mine on the desktop. And then it will generate two PDF files. The first PDF file is a situational map, much like what you're seeing on the screen. And the second PDF file is the tabular data. So it's a list of all this, the affected um, buildings in our case, um, uh, or the summaries of the affected buildings. And uh, you can take these and print them out. They, they're produced in PDF uh, format, so they're print-ready documents. And you can use these as a um, uh, sort of in-your-hand version of the analysis um, you can uh, take out into the field. So let's have a look. Um, once the reports have been generated, they'll automatically pop up in your PDF viewer on your system. So the, f the first report that you can see here is the tabular data, and this is the same information that was being shown in the panel, but it's now in print format. In some cases, the information might be extended above what you saw in the panel. So uh, depending on what impact function was being used, uh, it may show um, more details um, relevant to that impact function. And the second part of the report is the map, which is a print-ready map, um, which shows the affected buildings and the context information that you had loaded into QGIS. And, um, and then it also provides a legend showing you that um, the flooded buildings are on the range of one meter. Um, and they're not flooded on the range of zero meter or below one meters. Um, and there you have it. That's how you use InnoSafe. Um, we've got an active community. If you want to find out more about using InnoSafe, 
just go along to innersafe.org and there's, there are plenty of links to further information, uh, joining our mailing lists, um, and we really encourage you to um, let us know your problems or things that you'd like um, to see in InnerSafe and we'll try our best to help you. Thanks for watching.